Hello there everyone, my name is Raxby and welcome back to some more Professor Layton and Pandora's box. We're currently searching for the little boy Tom and Professor Layton said he actually knew something more but we had to go back to the place where we found him. So we're going to return to the hall here and uh, see what he has to say. But oh, it looks like Inspector Chalmy showed up. Let's see if he's any closer. Hmm. Ah. He has been found. That, that's good news. Oh. Uh, then why aren't you searching? Uh, not. It's not on the train? What could have happened? It's a moving train. Um. That. That seems like really flawed logic. Just because nobody has seen the kid doesn't mean he's not there. Yeah, fell off seems um seems a bit unlikely to me. Oversized heads. Yeah. Yeah, Chomi is not really kid friendly, is he? But apparently uh, he'll just leave it in the hands of the railway police, but yeah, Leighton uh, still put some doubt to his theory. He doesn't really think that child went away. But, well, Leighton, where did the ankle biter go off to? Well, barking up the wrong tree. Huh. These are actually some quite interesting words. Like, I want you to, guys to come back to this point in just a little bit. But um, right now, we need to continue searching for Tom. And we're going to head down now. And oh, who's that? Oh, what, what's up, Luke? Ah, you feel like someone's been watching us. Oh, we did see a nice skirt and some legs. Who, who could that be? Could that be our stalker? Do we have someone who considers us their senpai mm, it's possible oh but what's this another shoe looks like the same one even ah huh. same foot yeah it, it must be the same one we probably just dropped it again didn't we uh, unless oh well late and uh Finally got it. Luke still isn't on his page, but let's uh, look back at what we know. We found a tiny shoe. Small enough for a baby. Then we find found the little cap in the kitchen, in a really tiny corner. Yep, and it would have been like half Luke's size to get back there, which is really small. And... Uh, yeah, it seems that Luke is pretty much the smallest person on the train, which is interesting. But Layton apparently claims we've seen Tom without realizing it. Because what we did assume Tom was a small child. But what if he wasn't? What if Tom was never human? And the second shoe is also a left shoe. Like, who would need two left shoes? Well, our friend Tom. What is his true identity? Professor Layden has a feeling that Tom may not be the kind of boy he was assumed to be. Move the L-shaped pieces around and arrange them into a plus shape in the middle of the board to reveal Tom's true identity. Now like I've said before, I'm really bad at sliding puzzles, so let me speed this up for you guys, uh, so you guys don't have to watch me suffer through it. And there we go, Tom's true identity is finally known to us. Tom was a dog all along. Yep, that's right, Luke. And now uh, we did see that mysterious girl holding a small dog. I suppose that must have been Tom then. So uh, we just need to find her and then we'll find Tom. So uh, let's see if we can find her. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go north now, and uh, keep going north. Uh, let's just keep moving on north. 
Hmm. Jomi is here. Let's uh, tell him the news. Well, we do know something you don't. So don't no need to go to Babette. We're right about to tell her where her child is. So yeah, we know Tom's location. Just give us a few minutes and uh, we'll find find Tom. We know the truth already. You don't know the truth, so yeah, don't don't worry. But he's uh, not gonna wake up a bat from her nap, which is very thoughtful of her, and uh, that gives us a little bit more time to find Tom. So let's uh, hurry though. We we don't have too much time, so let's keep going north and what. Who's this? Grousley. Look at this. You've managed to solve at least 12 puzzles. I, I, I suppose we have. Thank you. Um, so yeah. We'll, we'll, sure, we'll be pals. I mean, you don't really look like the type to belong on a fancy train like this. But, hey, you know what? We'll uh, be friends with you anyway. And uh, he uh, has, well, maybe he has some information on Tom. Like where Tom is. Ah, he saw someone to the, heading to the back of the train. Good. We'll have to go there now, but... Nope. Our top hat is taller than his top hat, and he can't appreciate that. So, we need to, um... Solve the puzzle for him. Because, well... Yeah, his, uh, top hat is too short to solve it. That That's, that's where Leighton's brain comes from. It's in his top hat. That is the source of his thinking power. So we need to solve puzzle number 12. Clouds and sky. A man on the train shows you a picture he's painted. Let's say this picture has a total area of 10. Can you work out how much of it is made up of clouds compared to the area that's made up of sky? Don't think you need to guess the answer. There's a definitive method you can use to work this out. How much of the area is sky and how much is cloud? Okay, so what is a good way to do is you have these little dots. Why does it like, wow, it does not seem very accurate right now. Um, I need to uh, make that more accurate. But basically, let's draw lines in between these dots now. Like this. Oh, damn it. That does not really work well, but okay. And then you can see we have like 10 sections, more or less. Now, first of all, we can see that this and this section are entirely um, sky. So we know that at least those two are sky. But the others, you know, it's, it's a bit trickier, right? There's a lot of white and a lot of blue. Now, luckily, uh, if you look, uh, let, let's look at this one and at this one, okay? Those two squares, they actually have just as, like, the, it, um, the blue in one part is actually the white in the other part. So they are basically mirrored or inverted colors of each other. So if we merge those two together, we would get one extra space of white and one extra space of blue. And the, actually the same thing goes for all of the other um squares in this entire thing uh for example this could be seen as three together with this and you know etc like uh, this one belongs with this one i believe and then uh this one with this one so we now know that eight of the pieces you know are half sky half cloud whereas two pieces are entirely cloud so that means that we have our answer namely six pieces are going to be sky with four pieces being cloud and now to test my theory and there we have it and there we go by defining it up like that you uh, get to see a bit of a better picture Yep, we do have quite the head on our shoulders. Or should I say, hat on our shoulders. Well, not on our shoulders. On our head, actually. But uh, we need to go to the deck, observatory deck. That's apparently where she is. And then we also got a new camera part. But for now, 
let's move on to the observation deck. So without further ado, let's see if we can find her. Aha, uh -huh. there she is. Excuse me. Yes, I had the sneaking suspicion that it was you who was tailing us. Flora! What are you doing here? I'm sorry. It's just... Well, you see, I just didn't want to be all alone again. Hmm. Professor? What lies ahead could be dangerous. Huh? That's why you'll have to be extra careful. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's right, it's Flora and she had Tom. Ah, but yeah, for those of you who don't know who Flora is, well, you should have played or watched my let's play of the Curious Village. But yeah, she is the um, she's gonna going to be joining us on our journey now. And uh, let's quickly grab Tom now, who is uh, yipping away, and um, we can bring him back to Babette and uh, make her happy. And yeah, Flora is happily tagging along with us now. So yay! That's fun. I like Flora. I, I really do. And as you can see now on the top screen, it's the side screen now, but I'll, I'll make it a little, a little bigger for you guys right now. Uh, you can see the little four icons of Leighton, Luke, Flora, and Tom. And it just shows you who's currently traveling with you. And usually it, it was just Leighton and Luke. I never really made a note of it because it wasn't really relevant. But yeah, now you can see all four of them. Anyway, let's switch the screens back and uh, head down to Babette. Um, I believe she's further down. Uh, right here. Ah, there she is. I know, she's very happy to see Tom is safe. And uh, Chelmy is not quite... Uh, impressed with Babette's failure to provide details on it being a dog. But, uh, yeah, Babette doesn't appreciate Chelmy's terms for her dog. Uh, but yeah, Chelmy uh, really doesn't appreciate it. And uh, him and Barton are going to leave again. And uh, Babette is certainly not happy. But at least uh, Tom is back safe and sound, and nobody has kidnapped the doc. dog. Well, I guess Flora kind of kidnapped Tom, but well, we will keep that to ourselves. Good thinking, Luke. And uh, Fl Flora being a bit scared there. But we do get a nice reward for this, and that's a new hamster toy. So very nice, that should help us out. And uh, we're soon going to make a stop at Dropstone, which should be uh, pretty soon, but let's uh, head back to our wagon. Oh, first of all, we have now solved our very first mystery, Tom's disappearance. It turns out that Tom isn't a child, as was originally thought, but rather Babette's pet dog. It would seem that Babette's affection for Tom is so deep that she considers him to be much more than just a pet. How nice. With that said though, let's uh, head back to our quarters and uh, I guess Flora can room with us from now on. So uh, let's go now. Don't really want to talk with Babette, but yeah, where have you been hiding, Flora? Ah, you had your own room, huh? Hmm, that's interesting. The middle one in the third carriage. Huh, that's funny. That's right next to ours. What a coincidence. Yeah, Leighton, you uh, really need to work on those powers. And oh, what? 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 What was that shaking? Was there an earthquake while we we're on the train? 
that that would be weird. I I I, I haven't really experienced any earthquakes as far as I know, but I feel like if you're on a train, that would be even weirder. But the train apparently stopped, so uh, let's get off now and see what's going on. Uh, Beluga is already chewing out Samuel. But it's a broken train. That that doesn't really seem to be Sammy's job, is it? Oh, oh no, there's a train in the way. Well, I guess uh, they're going to have to start moving it. Although Sammy isn't really quite sure how to. So uh, we'll uh, need to get it done. Oh, and uh, oh, Beluga is his uncle, huh? So it was Beluga's camera that he destroyed and that we need to fix again. But uh, yeah, Sammy isn't really pleased. So let's uh, go over and see if we can help out with that train blockage. Ah, yeah, what seems to be the problem? Uh, a big freight train is blocking our way. Why would they just park a freight train on the middle of the track? That that seems like a really bad idea. Like bad planning. I mean, it's a rail track. We can't just drive around it like in a car or something. But uh, luckily we uh, seem to... They uh, seem very appreciative of us helping out. And uh, Steve as well, he is of course the mechanic, so let's uh, discuss our plan of action with him. So yeah, the Voluntary Express can't go anywhere until we move the train. So, we start Puzzle 26, Train Swap. Swap the positions of the two trains along the tracks. Move the carriages one at a time and make sure the numbers by the side of the track match the numbers on each carriage. So yeah, uh, up up there you can see um, the numbers 1, 2, and 3. And down here you have 1 through 4. And we need to swap the trains around. So let's see if we can do that. We can just start by moving over this one. Uh, placing this one here and moving over this one. As well as this one to the side. And that will allow us to move 1 over all the way. Move 2 over all the way. Move 3 over all the way. And even move four over all the way. But of course two and three are blocked now. That's fine though. Because this is only temporary. We're going to move four back out of the way. So we can move two and three back there. And now four down. And that solves it. This should do the trick. And there we have it. That's right. That solves it. So let's hurry back to the train. And uh, yeah, we can continue our journey now. So let's uh, leave the rest to Steve. And there we go. We're back on track. So very soon we will arrive in Dropstone. Maybe that will give us some more information. And then uh, we also get a new camera part. And luckily we didn't miss any puzzles. So good job. And that is the start of chapter 2, the country village of Dropstone. And the train's looking trashed, so uh, they're gonna have to stop for repairs. We have three entire hours to just uh, explore the village, so that sounds like a great idea. And uh, which is exactly what we will be doing. Let's uh, take in the sights, and uh, do you have anything else to say here? Uh, it's the most chill place on earth. Okay, so uh, some people are uh, walking around and there's the 50th anniversary of this village going on. So it seems like there's a lot of stuff to do, which is uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. We'll uh, have to explore that. And yeah, that is actually quite young. But yeah, well, who's, who knows what we can find. Yep, the answer is often in the unlikeliest of places. 
That is definitely very true. But I'm actually going to end that off here and we'll explore the village next time. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you want to see me explore it, then be sure to subscribe because then you will be able to get updates on when we start exploring it. And if you enjoyed this episode, then maybe leave a like down below. That always helps out a lot. Until next time.